Hi, Professor. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, let's check your presentation whether I have to make you presenter, I believe. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it's still being disabled. Still disabled. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I made multiple participants, see whether you can uh, share or present now. Oh yeah, thank you, Reza. I can share now. Yeah, I think I can see your screen now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can share your screen. Okay, uh, you want to check also GLI, whether she can do it? Uh, GLI? Can you share your screen? Oh, actually, I, I can uh, navigate a slide for her. So. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, good. All right. So let me check one more thing now, which is I want to also, I don't need to share any screen, but I, I can just read, but let me just double check. Yeah. Can you, um, can you unshare for now? Yeah, okay. Let me. Okay. Stop sharing.
All right, so we can get started. Let's see how is the attendees. Yeah. Uh, for... We have participant 70, so let's get started. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, I need to, uh, before you, uh, can you go back to not share right now? Because I need to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to everyone to this uh, monthly tech talk series from computer science department at Maharishi International University, known as MIU. Our speakers are usually from the faculty, students, and guest speakers from industry and academia. I am Dr. Emdad Khan, professor of computer science at MIU. A quick background about this talk, our machine learning course, ML, that covers state-of-the-art major ML topics, including neural networks, deep learning, evolutionary learning, decision trees, and random forest. Um, just wanted to make sure, um, let's record it first, give me. Yeah, it's, it's being recorded, I believe. Yeah. It's recorded good. All right. So um, so the course, um, so we cover, you know, major topics of machine learning, neural networks, deep learning, evolutionary learning, decision trees, and random forest. The course also includes a project where the students can use topics, algorithms covered in the class, or they are also encouraged to use topics, algorithms not covered in the class. So generative adversarial neural net, uh, networks or GANs, uh, main topics of today, stock, I usually do not cover in the ML course. Our speakers, WinFem and GLI Zhang uh, recently completed machine learning course with me and used GANs based image and video synthesis, not covered in the class. And they have done it in a nice way. Thanks to Veen and GLI for that. Now let me introduce our uh, talented MIU students and alumni. alumni. First is Veen, Veen Fem. He's a senior full stack, full stack consultant at Geo Span, uh, a technology consultancy that assists leading firms with digital transformation initiatives. WinFam has nine years hands-on experience in involving, <coughs> sorry, uh, experience involving agile software development practices. He is also a co-founder and startup that provides SaaS software as a service with nine million VC funding. Vin worked as principal software engineer at Alibaba. He's working as a product engineer at CVS Health via Span. Our second speaker is GLI Zhang. Uh, she's senior engineer at Ford. Um, Ford is an American multinational automobile manufacturer headquarter in Dearborn, Michigan, United States. GLA is then graduated from HZ, HZAU, Huangzhou Agricultural University, as CS Bachelor in Wuhan, China. She worked as a big data engineer in supersymmetry, Beijing. We are very proud to have great talents and founders with us today. My heartfelt thanks and appreciation to both of you for accepting to present at this event. Before I start, I start though, um, <clears throat> I just like to um, give a brief about GANs. Uh, many of you know about it, but uh, a 
short introduction. GANs have been very popular since its invention in 2014. It uses generative and discriminative models in a game playing setting type. Generating, <coughs> sorry, generator uh, generates an object, a fake object basically to match the original object. And then um, discriminator tries to differentiate the original with the fake. So if discriminator is successful, then generator makes it more difficult for the discriminator so that it cannot separate uh, fake from the original. And the process continues and it stops when discriminator cannot differentiate from the fake or from the original. So there are basically it cannot differentiate fake versus original. So machine can generate something which is supposed to be fake, but it's very close to the original. There are many applications of GANs, and we will hear from our speakers about image and video synthesis. The key idea is that, you know, for very complex models, specifically complex models, those are data driven, data change the model. So traditional physics based model uh, does not work well for such applications. And there are many big data applications, machine learning applications today, where machine learning can solve this problem in a more effective way. One good example would be digital twin. With that, um, Veen and GLI, you have the floor. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Professor. Let me share my screen. I'm stuck in the recent mode. Okay. Uh, can I, can anybody see my screen for now? Yes. Okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor for inviting me to join the TED talk today. I'll be honored uh, to be our speaker today. And I'm very grateful. I'm a recent uh, Professor Air Force for teaching us in the last course, as well as engaged me to do this that talk today. Um, yeah, again, thank you very much, Professor. So <clears throat> the topic today is about like image and video synthesis and using GAN or is on Sonora generating any virtual networks and deep learning. So uh, the Visca today, me, Vin, and GLA, my partner. So uh, let's go with the agenda today. So today we will cover about uh, introduction about what is the, uh, the purpose of the topics and then what's the games and the test one is CVAE. CVAE is also known as like con, uh, conditional variational auto encoder. And then the next uh, top, minor topic will be CGAN. That's kind of uh, extension of GAN, but we just add more uh, variate, like more variable or condition inside. And I'll talk a little bit about what data set. Am I using? No, we, we were used. We were using to uh, train our data. And how do we implement that one? Uh, I'm not planning to do a demo today because the training took a lot of time to finish. So I will show the, res the result at the end of the, uh, <clears throat> of the, of the test talk. And then just some picture to show the flow that we did because it took probably like 11 hours for me to strain uh, this model using uh, my limited resources. Um, so let's start with the introduction. So in the TED talk, uh, we will discuss about the generating anniversary network, uh, which also uh, we can say is again, uh, by using deep learning. And then uh, we will also cover about uh, CVE is a con conditional variation of auto encoder and CGAN as well. That's kind of a variant of GAN. Um, 
So we're going to train uh, to train the model using two techniques like CGAN and CBAE to read it, the next RAM of the image. So we from uh, the generated video correct corresponding to the original video. So you, you guys may know there's a lot of practical, um, I mean, uh, application application for this one. Let's say if you you have an old image and you lost some corner and you just want to uh, recover and you can apply this model because it can recover your, it can, it can reject the next frame or something. Uh, I can say like the distribution of the, uh, the visual from your images. So, or uh, the real application, like we can use uh, the technique to um, investigate, I mean, in a uh, uh, cram investigation, like you have a video of someone uh, uh, doing some uh, violation somewhere, but it's not clear. And then we can uh, use the, the technique to read it, uh, the next frame of the video. But that would be the future readings, and I mean the future application of the technique. So um, hand over to uh, GLA, and then she will talk into the a little bit about detail about generating an adversarial network with the answer known as GANs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so generative adversarial networks, so uh, as we know as GANs, and it uh, basically has two neural networks and they're just like playing a uh, fight against each other. So uh, uh, one is generating uh, the new synthetic, uh, the new data and uh, the other is just to check or uh, predict which is uh, the uh the the data is real or or false yeah and uh GANs is also uh wide use uh wide widely used in the uh, image generation video generation and also voice generation okay uh next slide please thank you okay so um the discriminative uh is always used to uh, used to generate some uh, some oh sorry <laughs> that, that is the generative okay the discriminative is also uh, uh, to predict what the data type is and uh, uh, and uh, while uh, generative always uh, generate uh, generate Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, generative, uh, instead of predicting uh, the label, it generated the, uh... I cannot hear you. Oh, you... sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Okay, so generative uh, always uh, do do the opposite with the discriminative. Uh, it's uh, instead of creating the label or pre or doing the predict thing, uh, they just attempt to uh, to generate the some uh, some features of the certain uh, category or labels. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so here's a kind of a story of a bank robber who uh, generates a fake money uh, by using the, the features uh, the, the, the real money has and the discriminator, discriminator who is that is police and use some uh, trained real data from the fake money and uh, to discriminate uh, which is the real money or which is the fake money. And uh, yeah, how GANs work. Um, OK, 
okay, uh, the generator generates the uh, new data instance and the discriminator, yeah, evaluates the, uh, evaluate the data. And uh, then the, the, the discriminator decides uh, like the which is the real money or which is the fake money just to uh, put him as the uh, label and uh, uh, for this formula uh, I'm not quite sure I'll, about I'll, this. I'll take over when we think uh, in GLA. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this one. Um, well actually in GAN in generate the anniversary network we need to have two network. The first one we call generator network. And the second one does it discriminator, like in the revert example to let you guys uh, easy to imagine. So what is generator and what is discriminator? So a uh, generator is someone who try to generate uh, the original one by adding something, but actually that's not the real one, but the discriminator that's what we try to uh, find to find out. So, what is the difference between them? What is the the um, uh, I can say the accuracy between the real one and the fake one? So, uh, the function below uh, you are seeing here is the objective function of machine learning. So, what is the objective here? The objective here we try to maximize the probability of assigning the correct label to both training example and the example from G. G means the generated uh, generated video. D is the discriminator. And G, what is G here? G here is kind of a uh, latent cost from Gaussian distribution because we are trying to, um, we can say that normalize the video uh, and make it into the distribution, Gaussian distribution. So what is Gaussian distribution? That's kind of a uh, replicability uh, theory and with also uh, no a normal distribution. So it's uh, related a bit to our replicability in math. But you, you can know like that's just kind of um, technique we use here uh, to uh, optimize the replicability, the big show, I can say that, of the, the image, of the video. And then the min map uh, function here, that's in the mini map. We are trying to find out the mini map value. Uh, between uh, the this room, the generator and the discriminator. So uh, the first you can see like E S uh, to P S of S is mean that is the expected value. S is the uh, the video, the original video, um, and then by calculate the log of D. Uh, D here is the discriminator. As the capital X in the video, in our input video, WD in the weight, the weight of the this uh, of uh, the discriminator network, and then plus the expected value of G. G mean we add some noise. Uh, what 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 do I mean by noise? No, I mean we add some number or some random number or uh, some code, some sample from the Gaussian distribution. And uh, we need to find out the lock <coughs> uh, from one with minus two, the discriminator, and G with the, the generated video, because we, we can see here G, uh, we have the input e, e Z, and with WG, so we, we <coughs> sorry, we will add the, uh, the noise, the random number noise with uh, using the weight of the generated uh, the generator network, and then uh, the third and the the four operator here. Uh, this is the advanced value, uh, 
S S Y S I E the initial image. It means we we will input the first and the last image of the video, the initial image and the final image. And we we can and G I E D uh, the initial uh, video, uh, not not initial video. Yeah, and the G F E D final. So uh, what? If you see the uh, double uh, vertical, <clears throat> double vertical are uh, here with total is mean we need to calculate uh, the summary of square component that's in the norm norm distance between two vector. So um, and we can see the lambda L lambda that's kind of a hyper a hyper parameter or we can. Uh, call that e a learning rate in machine learning. If you want to control uh, your learning process, sometimes you need to change the rate, and that's it called learning rate or lambda. Uh, I'm going to here. Yeah, that's kind of um, uh, visualization to to. <clears throat> to describe uh, what I'm, I just talked about, you can see we will have uh, two network. The first one is generator, and the second one is discriminator. So we will need to add or input some random noise into the generator. And we try to in, uh, the generate the input of the generator. A first, first of all, is the random noise or uh, a sample cuts from the Gaussian distribution. And the second input is the real image. And we need to, to add something, combine them, uh, go through the generator network, and we try to generate the, the network. The purpose of generator is try to pull, it's mean to match the other one. Okay, that's the, uh, the, real, the real one. And then the discriminator, the purpose of this one, it is try to distinguish between the generated video and the real video. So the input of uh, the discriminator is ED, the output of the generator and the real video, which is come from the training, training set. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, the objective function, let me go back here. The mini, the mi, minima function, which is also called the loss function. The loss function mean uh, we have the or, original video and we have the, uh, the generated video. When we add something, we can calculate, okay, do we have some, because it was trying to compare the distance uh, I can see that's that's the um, Euclidean distance between two vector, and then so what is the loss? <coughs> okay, uh, you as you can see here the gen this is the formula of the generator function. We need to fit to fit uh, our. In, inputs into a gener generator network, and we need some G, G, D, D, C, D, uh, the latent codes or the random number and some bias, bias. So we usually use bias to control uh, the learning process. And absolutely, we also need uh, lambda or learning red, learning red somewhere. So uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, machine learning or neural network, you may know about this one. This is uh, the basic formula how to calculate uh, the, the, I can say the, the objective function. And you can see this is the loss function I just mentioned here. So the expected value of the loss function will be will based on this. Uh, formula. So we need to calculate a lot of D of, of discriminator of generators based on the input G. 
uh, by uh, that's it in the noise sample. And this is the discriminator formula. Uh, it's slightly different because you can you can see <coughs> on the right side the loss function is from the noise. So uh, because we add some noise, we cannot calculate um, the loss function from the the generator, but we need to do that from the discriminator because we are comparing the distance between the two, two vector. So I don't want to deep dive into this one. That's kind of uh, similar to the other one. <clears throat> yeah, this is just more visualized about the easement. So we have the dimensional noise vector, that is G. We fit them into the generator network and generate the fake images. And our real images from our data set, we also fit in <coughs> fit into the discriminator network. And then we can read it, the, the label of uh, of the video. Okay, this is real or is it fast? So how, how many percentage of uh, Accuracy, this is loss. Uh, how about the loss value, etc.? So, uh, next, uh, I will cover some introduction about conditional uh, variational auto encoder. So, is it a, a, like a name? You can see encoder, encoder, uh, which means we will encode our video <clears throat> and then uh, we our input video is a kind of a radical radical video and then we will uh, use some technique to encode the value <clears throat> and then we can uh, add some random what why we why uh, what do I mean by add some random var variable z because that's a conditional we need to add something. Otherwise, it's minute if you just use the original video and then you use strain. So, so the video can, the, the machine learning algorithm cannot learn anything because it's just like constant. We need to, to add some variable inside to make it uh, high, slow, or something. That's why we can learn. <clears throat> because machine learning is a process of learning from different value, from different data set, from different inputs. So, and then we uh, see, assume that the G is generated from prior distribution. So uh, you can see the, um, I can say the P, uh, P of theta G, uh, SE apply Bayer theory. The Bayer theory is kind of a probability theory in math for, uh, identify the uh, the probability. Uh, let, let's say some, uh, I want to dive about this one, but uh, just want to elaborate a little bit about this one, uh, about uh, payer theory. It, it can identify uh, what data set, if the data set near the mill uh, of the distribution, it will be like uh, frequent, frequently occur and some someone and some distribution far away from the mu value of the distribution. So it is less frequent occur in, uh, in the distribution. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the data is generated from some condition distribution P theta of S uh, and vertical Z is mean like, the probability of S given uh, by Z. This means we will have the probability of S by we add in some Z uh, variable. <clears throat> That's why Z sometimes we call it the, the hidden variability of data S because we didn't know we add something, some random number. Uh, Okay. Here is the 
um, a visualization of what I'm talk, talking about. <coughs> we have an encoder and a decoder. So we need to input the image. And then it will go through our network and we'll use the, the hidden, this is the hidden network using some latent or some sample, but we can say that's the noise distribution and to encode. And then we will use the, another network, we call it decoder based on the, uh, the generative, the generators one. This is the output of encoder. And then we try to process and calculate, compute, and we try to reconstruct the original image. That's the process of like encode, decode, that we want to learn. Okay. If I can encode this one based on the share additional data, and I will use that shared additional data to decode back. Uh, uh, from my point of view, this one look, look like uh, some um, Bristol algorithm, not, not, yeah, not Bristol, Bristography algorithm. If you, you need to uh, encode based on some ski and then you that ski to decode. But that's the concept. It's uh, to let you guys, if you want to imagine something. And this one, uh, the minimum uh, value, that's the objective function. Objective function is to try to minimize the loss, which, which is also called the loss function. Uh, the first, uh, the first part of this one uh, is the, because that's this one relate to another uh, math theory. This is a distant uh, KL mean uh, cool, cool back la cool labeler. Is it calculate the this the diversion between two vector? And we we uh, we use this one because it will like uh, encourage the value of the uh, <clears throat> the distance between the original and uh, the generated value. So <clears throat> the the last two parts of uh, this formula, you can see that uh, lambda one uh, norm s. Uh, minus g is uh, and sum up square two plus lambda s i g i sum square two plus uh, s f. This uh, lambda one lambda one lambda two is also the uh, hyper parameter or the London rate, and s is the original video, g is the generated video, s i is the in the initial <coughs> initial image initial frame and as a the final at the same uh, the final image and the gi is the initial uh, video that's just kind of it, the initial frame and the final frame G, gi and gf <coughs> Yeah, and for this just uh, wrap up like condition again, see, see again, we need to, uh, oh, sorry, not to wrap up. That's uh, the first one for C, <coughs> conditional variation of auto encoding. And next, uh, I will discuss about conditional uh, GAN or conditional generating and universal network. Uh, we, we can see like the S app, Oh, sorry, after the GAN here for the network, because we can have multiple network. Uh, as, you, as you are know that in neural network, we, we can have one, two, three, or whatever network, <clears throat> uh, because it's a multiple uh, layer architecture. So in conditional, uh, gangs or or C gang uh, that uh, I can say that that's the, just kind of an 
variant uh, extension of the traditional gang by <coughs> allowed to, allowed to generate an image uh, based on some condition attribute. Let's say in this case, I add uh, the the noise Z in inside the network, the generator network, <coughs> and uh, the discriminator network, and part of them will will receive the uh, uh, additional uh, information. <coughs> so so that we can uh, use the technique to train our model. So uh, by here we can have to network. We add random noise to the generator network, and after that generate a video. And then uh, the input of the generator will be fit into a discriminator along with the real video as well as some noise. And uh, the the purpose of discriminator is try to find out the real and the fake video. There, here, there the uh, the loss function or the distances, uh, uh, the Euclidean distance, that's the, the formula for calculate Euclid, Euclidean distance, or I can say that is the loss function. If you remember, we can say something like uh, log one minus D G G C. <clears throat> so uh, the objective function is just, just similar to try to, or you don't need actually to, uh, remember or to um, or understand deeply about the functional, but you can <clears throat> uh, just imagine that we try to minimize the loss function between the, uh, I can say, the loss function is return a value and we try to minimize the value, uh, the accurate value between the original and the generated value. If the value uh, come, come to zero, it means we have less error and both image or both video uh, will probably similar or can be the same. Yeah, that's just cover some theory about an in introduction about what a uh, GAN, what they see GAN, what they see <clears throat> CVAE, uh, I mean, uh, con conditional uh, variational auto encoder. So uh, let's go to some tool library we were using to, uh, to train our model. <clears throat> We were you like open CV to browse at the images uh, and PyCharm to develop our uh, algorithm SCP or image I on of this one. Uh, most of them just for image and video processing. And what is TensorFlow here? TensorFlow is kind of a machine learning framework uh, developed by Google and we uh, try to leverage this one to um, <clears throat> to review their neural network because they have very great support, uh, some neural network, and then we can review their neural network to, to train our data set, sorry. <clears throat> um, and so what is the data set? So it's very difficult to find the right data set but luckily, uh, we found out um, some kind of video uh, video data set. That's the uh, that's that's the name of movement video. Uh, they have probably one million short video uh, of a lot of category, and then uh, we can use this one to train our data. Uh, before going to uh, the training result, uh, I, I just want to record uh, at the beginning, I said that because of limited uh, resources, um, the specification of 
the current strain, uh, we we were run we were running the uh, the the trend algorithm <coughs> as well as the model through my MacBook uh, with uh, sixteen gigabyte um, memory, and uh, we have I have a CPU. But actually, if it, it can be faster if we can leverage GBU, but I cannot do that because my map doesn't support GBU visualization. And, but it took me 11 hours to strain uh, probably 200 video. So uh, I ran my training at less there and it's keep running for 11 hours before it's finished the training. But just 200 video, we cannot tell the good um, result because we need more video. So if you can, you can have uh, like one 1,000 or 1 million video and you have a bit of uh, machine learning left of like Google machine learning or uh, in Azure, we have like a uh, machine learning studio and uh, we, we we can leverage the platform, but it's costly. And because of the purpose uh, of the cost of this movement, we don't have enough uh, resources for doing that. <clears throat> so I'll, I can show you guys uh, the straining result of Kang. You can, you can see uh, we strain uh through like 100 epoch i mean like 100 uh iteration iteration and you can see in the top right uh i, I actually the the right most column here is the distribution loss uh and then you you can see the the value uh degree every time it's mean the loss function degree every time we strain so it will will be gradually better <coughs> yeah, here it is. That is some some image. Uh, we we were strand the um, the erupting category, and then it will generate the the results, generate the MB four file as well as the image for S in sport. And uh, some sometimes you see the value the left right. Sometimes it's in gray, sometimes it's in free. It's not stable because we just uh, consume uh, a small amount of video, which is not good. And this is the result of using the CVAE uh, technique. <clears throat> uh, this one, the loss function, you can some some. It's not stable as well. Sometimes it's in three, it D3, and just in three and D3 and three and D3. So, and we use this one. That's the kind of, we cannot see the, the clear images because uh, we don't have enough uh, video to strain in. It's just blur out because it cannot credit the correct uh, pixel. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and you can see, uh, I can draw the conclusion between two techniques uh, based on uh, the observation here for the CVAA is not stable. Uh, we strain um, our model based on the same amount of video, 200 um, video data set, but for a, a GAN network or CGAN, the the re the result is slightly better. The loss distribution loss function is the three kind of stable degrees. This means uh, the error the error value is the decreasing. If it come to zero, this would be perfect. But for for CV uh, IA, Con conditional variational auto encoder is not stable yet. So I refer to do, uh, I'm more favor to CGAN rather than uh, CVA. And yeah, that's just any question, comment.
Yes, um, everyone, welcome to ask questions to the speakers. Please go ahead. Uh, I know um, this kind of bit, a little bit relay a lot to Matt, but so sorry. Please, okay, go ahead. Hi, um, how did you transition from uh, what is what seems to be a very Java uh, focused uh, degree to uh, machine learning? Uh, sorry, I don't quite get your question. You you mean uh, our degree in MIU? Yes. And how, how, how can, well, actually because I'm, follow, uh, I'm following uh, data science track, it's mean I, I'm studying both at the same time, I'm more favored in data science. And in, in your company, if you want to transition, you, you, uh, you need to join some project with big data. Let, let's say in my uh, current company, I work for CBS, there's a lot of uh, data because I'm, build, I'm building their payment system. And then uh, machine learning kind of related to big data. You can learn uh, the new pattern based on the data. If your company uh, want to do that, like, okay, it, and you know some basic knowledge, some technique, you can suggest to the company, uh, do some more research, and then you can build, build up everything from, from the mon projects and you, that, that's the, the best approach we can follow to transition from the software engineer to the data scientist. Um, next is from Ali Kamiab. Go Thank ahead, you, Ali. Sir. Thank you, Fong, for uh, excellent presentation. Uh, I have a question um, that, uh, what is advantage of GAN? compared to the previous modules such as uh, CNN. And uh, the other question is, uh, can we use the GANs for uh, text prediction or text classification for text, uh, except uh, uh, video and white? Sorry, I don't get your last statement. Uh, so let, let, let me summary the first statement you, you want to know about the advantages of uh, GAN and CGAN. But what is your last statement? Uh, sorry. Oh, uh, the first question is uh, what is the advantage of GAN compared mm -hmm. to CNN and uh, like LSTM CNN modules? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the second question is uh, can we use GANs for text classification, text prediction? Um, okay, for the first question, uh, uh, from my point of view, I can, I, uh, <clears throat> I can answer you that the advantages, because I didn't stream uh, for a large data set, but from my 200 video, you can see the result, the advantages, a, the straining process more stable. And the loss function, the loss value, it decreased stable. It's come down to like from uh, uh, 100 to uh, 90 to city or something. But for the CCV uh, 80, you, you need to, because you need to encode something and you try to decode something, sometimes it's not stable because you need more data. The more data you have, the more accurate it will be. So, at this moment, I cannot say anything more about the, which one is better. But that is the option you can choose. If, if, if you can like uh, have resources and limit this, I mean the resources and the machine or some platform, and you can run like 1 million data set. That's it, the, the best time you, you, you can uh, like re recognize by yourself, okay, which one is better. And the second one, I think you can do uh, with uh, test reduction as well, even for void recognition, void reduction. Um, Professor, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, sure. So for the first one, um, just wanted to add that, um, you know, the models, 
uh, thinking or style of um, you know, making something with machine learning, there are two things. One is generative, one is discriminative. So in case of, uh, and I think uh, we explained that and GLA also in the in their presentation, but I just wanted to focus on that. So when you predict something or you classify something, you are just, um, you know, trying to find a match, right? Match means, you know, you train the system with some data like deep neural network, it extracts the features, but when it extracts the features, its goal now in traditional deep learning is to either classify or predict, right? Meaning that you trained with something whether, you know, in this case, the classes, if you are doing the objects, you have to still give the objects. Deep learning can extract the features automatically, but to minimize the errors, it will back propagate and do all those things to make sure that uh, it can classify or predict. But another way to think is generative models where you, you know about an object. So instead of trying to match it with something, you know all the features, how these objects to be created. So that is the generative model. So you generate it and then you say, this is, this is what it is. So you are not really classifying, you are generating, you know, ins and outs of the uh, process in this case, specific features, but use, using those features, in this case, we are generating something as opposed to uh, comparing something or classify something. So in the generative model, it generates and based on um, you know some real one, and it compares with the discriminative model. When you compare, then uh, it uh, if discriminative model can successfully com you know compare and say they are different, fake versus actual, then generative models make it harder for the opponent. It's like a game theory, right? Opponent means the discriminator. So when it becomes harder at some point discriminator loses and finds that original and the fake are same. So in this case, it's a little bit different machine learning approach and it helps better model many complex systems because a lot of things we cannot, you know, our goal is to model complex systems which cannot be modeled using physics model that I mentioned, mathematical model, because the system behavior changes based on the data. In a traditional algorithm, you know, like if you're taking a sorting algorithm, uh, after the algorithm is done, if you give a million array versus 100 array, the algorithm still will work. It may work slowly, but it will not change the algorithm. But in machine learning case, data changes the behavior. And that behavior changing part is the difficult part to model. And GAN is a, a nicer model to deal with that for complex cases. Um, does that help a little bit, Ali? Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much, Pam. All right, welcome. Let's see, I don't see any hands, but you can go ahead. You can just ask as well. So while waiting for uh, the question, I can share that like uh, the idea of the project would actually come from the real practice requirement. Uh, I got my friend who are do, doing business in the uh, in US and then one day he, uh, he were asking me like, uh, do you have any way to generate the video from the still image, from the status image? Because he's his business, uh, <clears throat> He, uh, he wanted to generate the video from a lot of, uh, from a design because he needed to wrap an image and wrap into a design and then generate an uh, animation. So uh, that's support for uh, and uh, advisement. And then the, when I got that requirement and as that moment I'm studying, I'm, stu I'm worth studying machine learning. And then I, I'm thinking, oh, why don't we, we try to do this? And then that's why I um, came up with this uh, idea as well. And I believe in the future, or actually I'm trying to work with this one to apply into that business. Um, 
but we, we do find another solution. But I mean, more more easy solution, we just try to record the, uh, uh, for now, the temporary solution, we are trying to, to record the animation of, uh, the video of the image in and then convert into video but in later future down the road we will uh try to apply this technique to generate the real video based on the still image yeah that will be helpful for many security applications you know these days for example Right. Uh, banking applications where they are very careful to predict, you know, who can attack next time or try to do harm to the bank. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and based on the previous images, if you can <laughs> predict more clear images, then they can also predict better, you know, how to prevent these kind of problems. Right. Yeah, and one of the one of the thing also will be probably I'm not sure whether from your business angle, you are doing it or not, you know, AML, anti-money laundering, is a big FinTech application. And in that area, you know, finding out, you know, when they sign up customers, bank signs up customers, is that customer going to be a real or not real? You know, it's a very difficult problem because it's not just video and image, but it goes also many logic how the right. behavior was and, you know, this kind of complex. So it's more AI driven as well as machine learning driven application. So anyone else would like to comment or ask any questions? We started with seven, uh, 79 or 80, we have 59 participants still. So, you know, uh, please feel free to ask any questions or comment, that comments. Now there are some chats. Let me check the chats, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. There might be questions in the chats. No, I don't think chats are questions. Those are, hello everyone. Yeah, so they're reading. Uh... Yeah, okay, all right, it's reading. So uh, Ali, if you can give your background because you asked the question, so it will be good to know about yourself a little bit. Uh, thank you, Professor, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Ali Komyob from Afghanistan. Uh, I did my master degree in China, uh, Tsonghua University, uh -huh. uh, data mining. So I used uh, okay. a deep learning, uh, LSTM, CNN for the text classification. Okay. Yeah, I'm new here. Okay. So, so you you are at MIU now? Yes. Okay. Um, so you are on campus or you are in CPT? I'm uh, in, I'm near student just in dormitory. Yeah. I'm sorry, didn't get that. In the dormitory uh, on campus. Oh, you are on campus. So you just, you just uh, came to MIU? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. okay. All right, welcome to MIU and um, Thank you so much. Yeah, good luck with everything. If we can help in any way in your, um, you know, in your stay on campus, uh, let us know. Okay. In, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Sure, sure. So for all the audience, this um, um, all the talks, including this one, will be on the YouTube channel. And if you want to review or listen to it, play it back again, you will be able to do that or share it with your friends. And also, you are also encouraged to 
also present or give a talk at our tech talk. Uh, this is a good forum uh, to interact and become more knowledgeable, which can be useful while you are at MEU, MIU, and also when you join uh, the industry and so on. So we want to make it more in, uh, interactive and make it more successful uh, on an ongoing basis. So let's wait about a couple of minutes if there will be, you know, whether to see there are more questions or not. Yeah. All right. How many audiences do we have, Rafesha? We have 57. Uh, we have still a good size. Yeah. But um, so we'll we'll wait another minute. Let's see. Um, I'm seeing Kony Kony Awan. He's raising his. Audience. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I missed that. Okay. Yes. Uh, Kony Awan, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, Professor, and good afternoon, Pam. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, based on the topic, uh, this is topic about image and video synthesis uh, with using GAN and deep learning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from the presentation, you you are telling uh, you are you saying that uh, we be using the the GAN system to uh, train the discriminator to different which one is real image and which one is a fake image by mm -hmm. you uh, giving the the noise or fake fake image uh, to uh, mixing with the real image and yeah. by uh based on the uh but can if we can synthesize uh video using gen can we use this technology to uh to create something like deep fake video if not if we are not able to to make it can we use the gen system to uh discriminate uh, whether the defect uh, the uh, video is a defect video or not thank you oh wow that's a very good question uh, <laughs> i don't think i have enough knowledge to answer that but from my opinion i can i think we can do that because the deep fact technique is actually using deep learning technique and it, it try to generate uh um an image by some somehow uh so far i don't think it will be the perfect uh let's say video or something which is similar to the original one then uh i think we we can use the technique like because we can use the discriminator network to recognize that's in my point of view I'm not sure we'll reflect the one to uh, <clears throat> elaborate more about this one. All right, no, um, thanks, Bean. And uh, thanks, uh, Kurnia, one. Uh, Kurnia one, right? Yes, um, <clears throat> it's, it's still, I, I fully agree. It, it is a, indeed a very good question, but the answer is um, similar. So similar in a sense that answer is yes, I will say the algorithm is as follows. Right now, the generator and the discriminator, they're fighting, they're playing, they're in a game, they're playing, right? Now yeah. think about, instead of letting discriminator lose, let the discriminator win. If the discriminator wins, then you can find out the difference between which is fake, which is uh, original. Uh, so we uh, it that means we can use uh, this gain system to 
uh, spot a difference which one is the real video, which one is a deep fake video, right? I believe so. You just extend the algorithm so that instead of defeating the discriminator, let the discriminator win. And discriminator also, when it loses first time, it changes its algorithm. So we just have to change the parameters of the algorithm and loss functions in a little bit different way so that ultimately most of the time, discriminators will lose. So after training that way, you should be able to find out what is real, what is not real. Okay. Uh, but uh, by that uh, point, uh, that, that thinking, uh, can we uh, let the discriminator to lose on purpose to in order to create a defect video? Defective video. Okay. Yes. Because uh, when we we are trying to spot which one is the defect video, we try uh, we just let the discriminator win. Now, if we want, we don't to, need uh, that actually. And go uh, ahead. Sorry. I will let you complete first. Oh yeah, uh, because uh, when we want to uh, spot which one is uh, the the defect video, we let the, the we try to let the discriminator win. Uh, so if we want to create or doing the other the the, other, the opposite, we just uh, let the uh, discriminator to lose, and so the generator will win. And can, can it can and can this way to to use to to create a defect video? based on uh, several uh, given image? Yeah, yeah. You can create defect video if you like to do that, yes. You can add noise to the video. That's what you're looking for, right? Okay. Now, if you also want to extend your question, I'm not sure maybe you had that in mind. If you take a noisy video, noisy image, and predict the correct one, that solution is there. We can use auto encoding for that. So auto encoding can, you can take a noisy thing. It's like filtered. It will get rid of all the noise during training, or auto associative training or auto encoding. And then it could, even if the uh, something is noisy or defective, uh, within some range, it can give you the uh, clean one. That's one scenario. But your scenario was, um, I think the opposite where you want to differentiate between defective versus uh, non-defective or original. And that one, as I mentioned, that algorithm, you know, should be, should work. Haven't done that, but logically it should work, yeah. Okay, this, uh, thank you very much, Professor. And thank you, Pam. Yeah, thank you. And there was another, hand but it's gone so maybe the question is gone or i'm not sure uh, but if anyone interested there are still 53 students so if any of you have any other questions let us know otherwise this is probably time to end the session yeah so let's wait 30 seconds just to make sure if anyone has any other questions I'll stop soon. Uh, I don't see any hand. Let's, let's see. All right, then. Thank you very much, um, all the audience, as well as the speakers, Vinfam and GLI. And um, Welcome. hopefully, <laughs> We'll be in touch um, from other angles, or if you come up with something new, you are welcome to present again. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Have a good day. Bye bye, everyone. And I wish can everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, by the way, Professor, uh, you mentioned that uh, this will be in MIU YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. I'm leaving. So I'm leaving, but I'll, uh, let's see how many people are here now.
I think most of the students left, so we can we can close the session.